Good morning. It's Christmas Eve. Tomorrow is Christmas. I won't be recording anything tomorrow, but I just wanted to take a minute. I, I was, Camille and I were talking yesterday and we were talking about favorite Christmas stories and favorite Christmas events. And she said her, her favorite Christmas story is the Christmas truce, the story of the Christmas truce that happened during World War I. And I found that there are many versions of that story, um, but there's a reason there are many versions of this story. On Christmas Eve in World War II, or World War I, I think, I forget what year it was. I don't know if I have it here or not. <clears throat> no, I don't. But anyhow, um, the soldiers are in their trenches. This was the days of the trench warfare. And they were close enough together, they could oftentimes hear each other in the trenches. Um, they were just that far apart, or you know, just that close together that they could hear each other sometimes talking in the trenches. And they would yell back and forth sometimes at night towards each other. But fighting took place. These guys were standing in these trenches, and the trenches were filled with mud and water and in many cases blood and they were just it was awful it was an awful awful thing and, and they would come up and shoot at each other between the two uh, and, and what was in between was called no man's land on Christmas Eve one year all along the western front impromptu truces broke out there was supposed to be a ceasefire on Christmas Day. But Christmas Eve, a number of stories are told. One story is told about how some of the soldiers began to sing um, Silent Night in the trench. Some of the American soldiers began to sing Silent Night in the trench. And all of a sudden, over on the German side, a German soldier with a rich baritone voice climbed out and stood in plain view for everyone to see. He could have easily been shot and begin in this rich baritone voice to sing Silent Night. And everybody just stopped and listened. Another story is told along that front how and this was with the English. Some of the English soldiers were sitting there and one tenor who had a beautiful tenor voice began to sing, The Lord is My Shepherd. And over on the German side, I don't know if the Germans had an abundance of baritone singers, but uh, a rich baritone joined in and began to sing, The Lord is My Shepherd, with this English soldier. And after they were finished the next morning on Christmas Day, some of the English soldiers climbed out of their bunker, out of their foxhole, out of their trench, into no man's land, and they had a soccer ball with them. Easily could have been shot, but they began to play soccer, and the Germans saw them, and some of the German soldiers climbed out and joined them, and there in no man's land where there were holes from bombs and, and perhaps even dead soldiers lying, they had an impromptu soccer game, English between English and Germans, the English won <laughs> the, the, the contest. Um, another tells how on Christmas Eve, it started with singing. All of them started with singing. And the soldiers began to climb out and meet in the middle and sing together. And they began to exchange gifts on Christmas Eve. Some of them took pictures I even found where they had taken a picture and it was in the World War. Uh, it's called The Real Story of the Christmas Truce. And <clears throat> this is one of the pictures of the soldiers meeting there in no man's land. Here's another picture. You can see on one side the German soldiers with their sort of Russian caps 
and the other ones had their berets and so forth on. I'm not sure what the guy in the middle was. I would say he's English. But anyhow, they climbed down and they met and they took pictures together. And those pictures are in the World War II, World War I Museum. But you say, well, what's that got to do with anything? I'm just saying that Christmas reminds us that God wanted peace on earth, goodwill toward men, that that was the desire of God as Christ came to this earth. And while man has done everything in his power to oppose peace and to fight with one another, right now as we sit here on Christmas Eve, there is fighting going on in Washington. I don't mean literal fist fighting, but there is fighting going on between uh, the two parties on trying to settle an issue. In other places in the world, there's literal fighting going on. And it's all because we reject the message of Christmas. We reject the Christ of Christmas. There is a day coming where that will not take place. The Bible says in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 10, I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations, and his dominion shall be from sea to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth. Right now, Jesus came to this earth to set the tone for peace, and he gives us the option whether we're going to follow or not. There's a day coming where Christ will come and establish peace and it won't be an option and the peace that so often rears its head at christmas time in the most amazing places will be a peace that will truly last for a thousand years well i hope you have a very peaceful and blessed christmas and if you're able to tune in on the Break Brother Church Facebook page tonight. We're going to be doing our Christmas Eve service on the Break Brother Church Facebook page. And afterwards, weather permitting, I understand it's calling for some bad weather, but weather permitting, we're going to go down to our church pavilion outdoors and have an outdoor brief, outdoor Christmas Eve candlelight service at 8.30. So 6.30 on Facebook, the Christmas Eve service, if you can't catch it on Facebook, it'll be on YouTube a little later on the Break Church, Break Church of the Brethren or Break Brethren Church YouTube page. Or you can go to breakcob.com and see it there. But uh, anyhow, listen, I hope you have a great Christmas Eve and I hope you have a wonderful Christmas tomorrow. God bless you and Merry Christmas. <music>